Before we begin this video, we wanted to provide a little history. In February of 2022, we replaced our 20-year-old stove, a Magic Chef 3 burner propane oven with broiler. Yeah, it started having several issues. It blew up and nearly killed Cindy once, and eventually the bracket holding the thermocouple broke. We replaced it with a Furion 3 burner propane oven with broiler that we are going to review today. And continue to watch to the end of the video while Rich will talk about how products like this are developed. Yeah, it may become one of my business books someday. You never know, and you'll get the first look at it. Now on to the video. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Sub. And what are we doing this week? We are doing a year review of our Furion range that we installed, I think, back in February of last year. Yes, and so we use it the entire camping season. We've done everything in it from what? From like, baking bread to cooking on the stove to yeah, just about everything. Making, right. making roast beef. So we want to let you know what we think of it, what's good about it, what's bad about mm -hmm. it. And we're going to also do a few scientific tests too. Just it's love something. It's going to of course be science. Right. We're going to have a null hypothesis that I want to disprove or prove and we'll see where it goes. All right. Well, let's get into this episode. So we're going to do a few tests on the oven while we're reviewing it. And the first test I want to do is to see how fast it heats up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a base test of just the ceramic. And I'm going to be recording this all on a spreadsheet for a graph. Right. So we're going to take that right there. And you're doing it right on your pizza stone, right? Right. On the pizza stone in okay. the front. So 70 degrees is where it's starting. Okay. We'll start that at time T equals zero. Okay. So we're going to start then by lighting the pilot. So I've found about a year after doing this stove and learning about this stove that it, funny enough, it seems to do better when you have the lights on. And I absolutely refuse to believe that that's the case. Well, this is, this is going to be test five. As a man of science though, I have to yield to the data. And when you do not have those disco lights on, that pilot light takes about 10, 15 minutes to light. Absolutely. So with the disco lights, Cindy's been doing it every time. Let's see if it works this time. All right. So, Cindy shouldn't have to do all this stuff, but. So we're going to have to put this in, push this in right there and hold it for maybe about 30 seconds to right. even get the pilot going. Right. Normally it'd be like five to 10 minutes. You'd have to hold it. So, and when I had my other oven, all I had to do was to use the light, the little lighter clicker and put it right at the pilot zone and instant it was lit. So none of this stuff had to happen. So we're just gonna wait 30 seconds. So let's see if it works. All right, so you have to keep this button pushed in while you light the lighter with the lighter thing, right? Yep. Ready? Did it work? Nope. It didn't. Well, this was a fail. Well, that time it didn't work. Let's see. That's some of our dislikes of this oven. Let's try one more thing. All right. It's the first time it hasn't worked in a while. Let's see. Let's try the gas because we haven't cooked anything on the cooktop today. I didn't have to do that, but I did that out of habit. All right, so let's try that. See if that did anything. Want to give it a shot? Oh. It lit. Oh, lit. Okay, so it lit there. Maybe I had to pull the gas in. Yeah. So after you have your pilot light lit, you just have to hold this for like three or so minutes. And, hopefully and that's to heat the thermocouple. That's to heat the thermocouple. So hopefully uh, it'll do it. And guess what? My pilot light went out. Yep, pilot light went out. Yep. Suddenly, so now you're living our pain of the oven. Yeah, suddenly this my little trick's not working anymore. So usually at this stage, what happens is I take over. Want to take over? You have the magic touch? Yep. You have the magic touch. I don't know if I hit this thing harder because I'm mad at it. Like I twist it harder because I'm like mad at it. That could be the case. Yeah, you probably, you might hit it harder. So now we get to wait the few minutes for it to heat the thermocouple. All right. Now the pilot light is lit. Yeah, we, we I had it for about three minutes. Now I've slowly moved it out because if you move it out too quick, the pilot light goes out. Yep. So now we're going to try lighting the oven. So why don't you crank it up? Okay. Ready? Yep. There you have it. The process of lighting our oven. 
That only took, what, 10 minutes? Yep. So that took 10 minutes to light our oven. We consider that a glorious success in the annals of this oven. Mm, better than most. Go ahead and take a temperature. This is at five minutes. This is at five minutes. And I'm trying basically to use the same spot. We are at 239. That's pretty good. That's not bad at five minutes. It's probably faster than a conventional oven. All right, let's this see is our temperature in 10 minutes of preheating time. We're at 296. And what's your set point temperature? My setting temperature on this oven right here, and it's, its lowest setting is 350. Okay. So I'm trying to go for about 325. We'll see if we can do that. All right. So we are at what, 25 minutes? Yeah, uh, well, this will be the 30 minute read. The 25 minute was at 320. Okay, so this is 30 minutes then. 320, so that's okay. your base. So it has stopped heating at 320 when this is registering 350 on the dial. And since 320 is what I wanted it to be setting at anyway, we're gonna put our meat in and ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and see how the oven looks with the thermal camera before we put the meat in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Maybe so. All right, you ready, C? Yep, we're ready. All right, here's your ribs. We're going to take a quick look at the oven, too, to see how even its temperature is. You can see where the flame is. Things look pretty even around. I'm going to set it right on top of the pizza stone and let you look at it. Yep, all right. And we're going to close it, and we'll see how it does. So we're going to test this on the back eye and see how it does. And then we're going to test it with this, which I bought out of desperation. And it's called... Simmer great. Simmer great. Great. Ha ha. Get it? Ha ha. Great. Yeah. So this is, this is made of it's iron. cast iron. Yep. Cast it's pretty iron. heavy. Yeah. And it basically lifts your pot up off the eye so that it doesn't go directly on the eye and it helps to put a barrier between your eye and the pan. So we're going to see how that works as well. All right, people, you know what's coming. Science. Loyal viewers know what's coming at this point, right? Science. Sin, what's our null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that this is no different than having the pan rest on the <laughs> eye, You're right? You're good. And I didn't even pre-brief her that I was going to have her do this. So she's learned, the liberal arts major can learn <laughs> null hypotheses. Exactly. All right, so let's go ahead and get an initial cold temperature of the pan. Okay. It's reading 75, which is about okay. room temperature. 75. All right, so we're gonna turn this on. So without the simmer grate, it took 11 minutes and 12 seconds to bring this to a boil. So we're gonna repeat the same conditions as before, and we're gonna cover it and see how long it takes. And you can see the, the concept of this thing, how it kind of elevates the pot off the burner. All right, let's check it out. So it's starting to do the knocking thing like the other one, and it was about, what, 21 minutes? Yeah, 21 minutes and change. Yeah, so I think we're at our same level as the other one in 21 minutes. So it took a lot longer for it to heat up than the first one did. So thus breaking, thus nullifying our null hypothesis. So if you nullify a null hypothesis, what do you do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You think that means it's a double negative, so you accept it that there, uh, okay, so. or you reject it that there is no difference. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're confused. I'm confused. You reject the null hypothesis I that there is no difference, and you state that there is a difference. Okay, so there, I reject the null hypothesis, and there is a difference between using this with the simmer grate and using it without. So in conclusion, these are the pros of the Furion range. It has an oven window and an oven light that I really like. The oven, when lit, heats up quickly and works as well as can be expected. The cons? It doesn't work! No, I'm just joking, it does work. But the oven can take upwards of 5 to 15 minutes to light, and the back burners just simply do not allow for slow cooking without burning something. And the broiler area in this oven is much smaller than my old one. So do we buy this thing again? Probably not. But let's head to the 2023 Springfield RV Show and see what I liked. Just an interesting point here is that the right front eye is 12,000 BTUs, which is for high heat. The right rear is only 3,500, 3, which means it will go below 2,000 BTUs, which means it's perfect for your slow simmering cooking, which our lowest heat on our 
Furion oven is at 65. Yeah. So it, it does it barely will go below 2000. So yep. they say the ideal BTUs for slow cooking on a gas range is between 500 and 2000. So this one was clearly intended for your slow cooker. Then the left front is 9000 BTUs and your left rear is 6000. So this has a different <laughs> configuration that's really good for cooking. Yeah, we're at an Alliance fifth wheel. It yep. is a Paradigm 31. And this is an ex this, and this is an Exidia <laughs> gas oven. A different version of the disco lights. Yep. And you can't sell a stove without disco lights. I'm trying to see where the gas burner is in this one. <laughs> Not seeing it off the top of my head. It's probably in the back then. All right. Or no, this might be. A, this also could be a convection oven as well. So, so this is an unusual configuration in that your gas burner is underneath this little grate here. So, you, to get to it, you would have to undo these screws here. So, obviously, you would have to light it through the. And you can't broil with that, right? And you can't broil with that because your burner would be underneath here. So, different configuration. Got it's got a warming drawer. Um, this is insane. This is insanity. I need the stove. Okay, before we begin to understand how this oven actually came into being, we need to have an understanding of product development and how products like this get introduced in the United States. And to do that, there's actually seven different groups of people that end up producing this product. So let's go over them. First, number one, trumps everything the legal department okay so you can't talk to those people because all they'll say is well do you want to get sued for 10 million dollars the conversation over they win number two most influential important group the marketing department and like the legal department the marketing department just comes up and says hey we can sell a pet rock if we can sell a pet rock we can sell anything so don't worry about the engineering or anything else number three the bean counters and those are the folks like the accountants and the industrial engineers that make sure that a big, handsome profit is made with these different products. Number four, of course, the senior managers. And these guys will basically do whatever the first three people say. So that's kind of out there. Five, human resources. Human resources, many people don't know this, they control almost everything. So they're the fifth most important group. The sixth, the employee activities group. Okay, and the employee activities group, these are the folks that plan picnics and stuff, and they become more important during the summer picnic planning session. They actually go sometimes closer to HR. So, question, how does this affect this stove being built? I'm getting there. All right. Because just below the employee activities committee is the actual engineering department that engineers and designs this. They are the least important people of this entire product development hierarchy, and that's going to be evidenced here in this stove. All right. So there you have it, our review of the Furion's oven and stovetop. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you have the Furion oven and what you think of it. And if it works for you, because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.